Hello, this is CJ Hoyle. Today is Friday, September the 4th, 2021, and welcome to day seven of my solo canoeing adventure on the Rideau Canal. The time is currently 6.20 a.m., and after a nice, quiet, peaceful evening, camped here at lock number 17 for its rapids, I'm now up, awake, and starting to get things ready. My plan for today is to paddle further downstream on the canal. And tonight I'm not planning on camping at a log station for the first time on this trip. My plan is to be camping at Rideau River Provincial Park, which is about 15 kilometers downstream. And I'm also planning on making a visit to the community of Kempville today. Last night was relatively chilly. I think they said that it went down to about 11 degrees Celsius and it's still kind of chilly now. So I'm still wearing my long sleeve jacket as I'm getting things ready here. So the canoe is now fully loaded. I'm ready to get inside and begin paddling downstream into that beautifully calm, still river. Oh, and by the way, some of my nearest neighbors last night were these cows across the river. This truly is a perfect morning. Things could not be more beautiful right now. You never know how long the beautiful stillness of the morning is gonna last for, so I'm soaking this all in and enjoying it while it lasts. I'm thoroughly enjoying this scenery this morning. You can see a flock of wild turkeys over there. So the time is now eight o'clock and I paddled three kilometers so far. And as you can see, it's a great morning for wearing sunglasses. And the wind had just started to pick up now and it seems to be coming from the north again. There's a big bird atop that tree there. I can tell by the sound that it makes that it's an osprey. So the time is now 8.20. I've been paddling for about an hour and I've paddled five and a half kilometers so far. I'm just gonna take a break here next to this marsh to have some breakfast to refuel and also to put on some sunscreen to battle that big fireball in the sky. If you've been following this series from the beginning, you won't be surprised to hear that my breakfast this morning will be some delicious campsite overnight oats with some orange juice to drink. So after I finish my breakfast each morning, there's always a little bit of oatmeal left in the container, on the spoon and on the lid. And if I just leave it on there until I get to the campsite, that's gonna get stuck on there pretty well and gonna be pretty hard to take off. So I always just give everything a really quick rinse in the lake. And for whatever oatmeal particles that rinse didn't take away, I leave a little bit of lake water inside of the container to keep things wet so that later when I get to my campsite, I can give everything a proper washing and nothing will be stuck on. I do use biodegradable soap, but you're not actually supposed to put biodegradable soap directly into a lake. Otherwise, I would just clean it right here and now. So as the clouds seem to be lifting away, I can see that there's a nice blue sky as I continue paddling. There I can see a float plane flying overhead. Perhaps they're gonna make a landing here on the river. I can see some other people out there enjoying this beautiful day, doing some fishing this morning. And there's also another boat doing the same thing over this way. It simply is really beautiful this morning. This day kind of reminds me of the day that I paddled down the Autonomy River from Peterborough to Rice Lake on my trip last year of the Trent Severn Waterway. A nice, calm, quiet river. Lots of nice scenery. Straight ahead, there's an island called Libby Island. So the water continues on both sides of it, but the Rideau Canal route is signed for the left side, so that's the one that I'm gonna follow. And I can see there's another boat back behind me doing the same thing. And there's the first bigger boat that I've seen today. So I'm now just paddling past a float plane that's parked in front of one of these cottages or homes. I'm pretty sure it's a different float plane than the one that I saw flying overhead, considering this one's already been lifted out of the water and it seems to be all sealed up. And I can see that their next door neighbors also have a float plane, but they keep theirs on the land. Even though most of the scenery that I see along the shoreline here are cottages and trees, occasionally you also see the odd farm. And I think beyond the trees, there's always farmland for this area. As per this buoy here, the river must narrow up ahead. Looking back, it looks like there used to be a old swing bridge across this portion of the river here. Coming up, I can see another bridge. This one's for a road called Merlin Wilson Road. And over on the left side of it is a community called Beckett's Landing. I can see lots of ducks there camouflaging with the rocks. And up ahead there, I can see someone in a kayak doing some fishing. So if you take this bridge about four kilometers going in the south direction, that will take you to the community of Kempville, which is where I'm heading later today. 
And from the roadsides there, I can see that Kempville is part of the municipality of North Grenville, which is part of the county of Leeds Grenville. And if you cross the bridge going in the other direction, you enter the city of Ottawa, which has quite a large land area. So the time is now just after 10 a.m. and I paddled a bit further than 12 kilometers. Rideau River Provincial Park is only another kilometer or so down the shoreline up ahead. So my campsite should be somewhere over there in those trees, but I'm going to head over to the dock, which is over that way, so I can first go to the park office and get my permit. Now the time is only 10.15, and check-in time isn't until 2 p.m., but I spoke with the park staff on the phone, and they told me that because my campsite wasn't occupied last night, I should be able to check in early. Behind that person solo canoeing, I can see the beach for the provincial park, and there's the main dock there, which is where I should be able to pull in and take a walk over to the office. Looks like this person's sitting at the far back of the canoe. As you can see, the front of the canoe lifted out of the water. When I sit in the canoe, I always sit in the front seat and I sit backwards in it so that I'm closer to the middle. So back behind me, you can see that I have the canoe all locked up to the dock. And here I've arrived at Rideau Rivers Provincial Park. Now I'm gonna make my way back over that way and head over to the park office. At the moment, I can see that lots of the campsites are unoccupied, but I'm sure that will change later this afternoon as Today is the Friday of the Labor Day long weekend. So just a short walk away, I've reached the main gatehouse of the park. But before I go inside, there's something I have to do. When I stay at provincial parks, I have a tradition of always getting a selfie in front of the sign for the park. So my early check-in was a success. Now I'm gonna make my way over and check out my campsite. So I'm just on my walk to my campsite and I can see a painted turtle catching some sun rays on top of that log. So here I've reached my campsite for this evening. And I chose a campsite that was relatively close to the river over there. So I should be able to pull in the canoe back there to save myself a lot of portaging from the dock where I parked it a moment ago. The campsite is just up that way on the left. And with the proper footwear, I should easily be able to pull the canoe in right here and carry all my stuff to my campsite. So I'll walk this trail along the river here to get me back to where the canoe is currently parked. So I made it back to the dock here where the canoe is parked. Everything appears to be still intact, so can unlock the canoe and paddle down that way through all those weeds to the spot close to where my campsite is. And here I'm off. It's a little bit hard to recognize, but I think I found the spot. And keeping the canoe company as I unload it are a couple of frogs. So I've carried all my other stuff over. The last thing to carry, of course, is the canoe. So here's another look at my campsite. And to make things look a little bit more occupied, I'm gonna set up my tent over there. So the time is now 11.45 and I've got the campsite all set up and settled. Now it's time for some lunch. So I'm gonna start things off with a cucumber. Up next, I've got a sandwich with this tomato basil tuna on it. Up next, I've got an apple to eat. And for dessert, I'm gonna have a couple of these M&M chocolate chip cookies that I got from Merrickville. So the time is now 12.45 and I've got the canoe loaded up with a much smaller amount of my gear. Now I'm gonna get back in the calm waters of the Rideau River, head across to the Kempville Creek and paddle my way up towards the community of Kempville. My total paddling distance so far today has been 14 kilometers, and I estimate that my round trip to Kempville and back should be about 13 more kilometers. So across the river over there in that marsh is where the mouth of the creek should be. As you can see, the vast majority of this wide river is shallow with lots of weeds, and that's why the signed pathway of the canal is over there on the other shore. So up ahead there between the green and red buoys is the entrance into the Kempville Creek. And because we're just about to be paddling upstream on this next water body, the red buoy is on the right. Those two other paddlers that I met at my campsite last night were telling me that they live in the Kempville area and the Kempville Creek is one of their favorite places to go paddling. So I'm looking forward to my visit here. So here's my first look at the Kempville Creek looking in the south direction. So for the moment I have the wind behind me, which is counteracting any flow that this creek might have. So I've worked my way paddling about a kilometer up the creek so far, and you can see that one shoreline has homes or cottages on it, and the other side is just marshland. In a way, this river kind of reminds me of the lower Humber River in Toronto. I've been starting to notice the very first glimpses of the leaves changing color, and with the colder temperatures we've been experiencing the last couple of days, I can kind of understand why. Up ahead, I can see a kayaker paddling downstream towards me. Straight ahead, I can now see the bridge for Highway 43. So the Kempville Creek continues on beyond this bridge here, and it eventually wraps around to the right and leads into the downtown of Kempville. On the outskirts of Kempville, however, along this road, over this way to the left, 
there's an area where there's a whole bunch of businesses and there's a couple of errands that I want to run over there. So my plan is to find a spot where I can stash the canoe somewhere around this bridge where I can walk down that road and go and run those errands. And then of course I'll come back here and I'll paddle the rest of the creek to go and see downtown Campville. This looks like it should be a pretty good spot. And the canoe I've stashed just over here behind these reeds. So here's a look at the business area of outer Kempville. The main errand that I had to run in this part of town was getting another SD card for my phone for filming these videos that you're watching. I've ended up filming a lot more video on this trip than I had originally anticipated and I'm starting to run out of space and I want to make sure I can make it to the end. Because I film these videos in 4K, I need SD cards that are fast and they're not available at every store. So I've walked my way back to the bridge and I'm happy to see that the canoe is still where I left it. Now to get loaded back into the canoe and keep on paddling that way to go and see the less suburban downtown of Kempville. And so my paddling adventure on the Kempville Creek continues. Another one of those painted turtles. It looks like the creek gets a little bit more narrow up ahead. There are lots of turtles in this creek. Up ahead I can see a bridge across the creek for a street which is known as Bridge Street. Back on my bicycle tour of eastern Ontario from two years ago, I rode my bike across that bridge on day two when I was passing through Kempville. So this part of the river here looks pretty developed. Over here on the right I can see what looks like a public boat launch. But I'm going to keep on paddling a little bit further until I reach the main downtown street, which should be just around the corner up ahead. So coming around the corner, there's my first look at downtown Kempville. The last time when I visited this area on my bike, I bypassed the downtown. So I'm looking forward to exploring it a little bit today. So beyond the downtown, the creek does continue a little bit further. And since the time is only a little bit after 3 o'clock, and my plan is that I'm going to have dinner and walk around a little bit, I'm definitely not really feeling ready for dinner, so I think I'll explore a little bit further up the river, see how much further I can get. Although first, let's admire these cool old photos of what Kempville used to look like. The sign says shallow water past this point, but like I said, we'll see how much further we can make it. So it's really nice and calm and quiet in here, but the water definitely is quite shallow and rocky, and this is really not the right canoe to be paddling through sharp rocks like that, so... Probably not going to go too much further, but I can see a little bit more that I can go and see, so let's continue. So I actually decided to get out to walk the canoe the rest of the way because it was starting to touch some rocks, but kind of neat how the bottom of the river are just these very flat shelves of rock that almost look like concrete pavers, but that's just the nature of sedimentary rock. And then beyond here you can see where things really get shallow, and you can see that only a very small little trickle of water is actually coming down this creek so you definitely wouldn't notice any flow in the creek when you're paddling up it from the Rideau to get this far. So I've made my way back to the bridge and over here on the right I can see a mural on the side of this building of a boat called the Rideau King which looks like it was once docked here in Kempville. So the time is only 3.30 and I'm really not quite feeling ready for dinner yet but I think I'll just dock the canoe at this dock over here so I can wander around the town a little bit and then eventually I'll find some place to have dinner. So I wasn't actually sure who this dock belongs to, but based on these signs here, I'm almost certain that it's a municipal dock, so using it should be just fine. And to be safe, I decided to take the canoe all the way out of the water and lock it up to that tree there, just to be safe. So I was just learning from this sign over here that the settlement, which eventually became known as Kempville, was originally known as the Branch, and the name Kempville came about because it was named after a person named James Kempt, who was at the time the Governor General of Canada. So Kempville seems like a nice, quiet, peaceful town with quite a few old stone buildings. I also learned that the Kempville Creek used to be known as the South Branch of the Rideau River. So here's a look at the downtown of Kempville that's over on the other side of the creek. I'm really enjoying this walk. This is really a pretty little town. And Kempville even has a home hardware which is somewhere that's come in handy on some of my other vacations, but thankfully I haven't had any breakdowns and there's nothing for me to buy there today. Eastern Ontario really has a lot of pretty little nice towns. If you haven't already, I definitely recommend coming and spending some time in this part of the province. So for dinner, I've decided to get some pizza from a place called Mr. Mozzarella, which seems to be a popular local spot. So they had some very interesting choices on the menu and I'm excited to show you what I ordered, but they said it would be about 20 minutes before it's ready, so I'm gonna continue walking for a bit until it is. While I'm waiting, I've walked over to a place called Graham's Bakery to find something special to have for dessert. Well, they weren't kidding about it being wood-fired. 
They've got a lot of wood over there waiting to go on the fire. So because it was almost the end of the day, there wasn't a lot of choices, but I was able to get a butter tart and a date cookie. So lots of interesting choices at this restaurant. And when I saw this particular one on the menu, poutine pizza, I had to try it. So here's my poutine pizza. It even came with some extra gravy to go on top of it. And I got some chocolate milk to drink. And when I placed my order, I gave my name as Chris. So when it was ready, they said that the Chris walk-in order was ready. I kind of wish I had given my name as Christopher though. So in case you're not familiar, poutine is a French Canadian dish which combines French fries with cheese and gravy. And not something that I've ever seen served on pizza before. But just as you'd expect, it tastes delicious. Well, that pizza was so filling that I'm going to have to wait till I get back to the campsite before I have my dessert. Uh, but anyways, the time is now just after 5 o'clock, so I'm now going to head back over to that dock there and get the canoe back in the water and begin my 6 kilometer paddle back to my campsite at Rita Rivers Provincial Park. It kind of looks like there might be a storm brewing over there, but I double-checked the weather forecast and it still says that there's a 0% chance of rain this evening. So back in the canoe, and I say goodbye to Kempville as I make my way back down the Kempville Creek. So far things seem really calm and still. So I've just rounded the corner here and I'm now going to be heading in the north direction and I can see that I've got my work cut out for myself as the wind is still coming from the north. I can see some other paddlers up ahead heading towards me. It looks like those kayakers launched from this spot here at Anniversary Park where they have this interesting dock which makes it easier to get in and out of a kayak. So as I continue my way down the creek, the wind is still against me but it's very light pretty much negligible right now. So the time is now 6 p.m. and I'm well on my way back to the campsite and it's a lovely evening to be out paddling. I'm thoroughly enjoying this. So I've now just about reached the mouth of the river indicated by those two channel markers there and my campsite is somewhere over there in those trees and if I pan the camera over this way to the right we get a preview of where I'll be paddling tomorrow morning as I continue my way further down the Rideau. So here I'm making my way across the Rideau River and straight into the sun. And not the first time today when wearing sunglasses was a good idea. There's somebody stand-up paddleboarding on this fine evening. So somewhere along that shoreline there is the spot where I put the canoe back in the water that's close to the campsite where I'm staying. Kind of hard to recognize it. It all looks the same. Thankfully I have GPS to help me get back there. Well, as I get closer to it, I can kind of recognize it. So the time is now 7 p.m. and I've got all my stuff back here at the campsite. So since I'm staying in a provincial park tonight, the next thing that I'm going to do is take a shower. So I'm now feeling all cleaned up after that shower, and that will pretty well wrap things up in terms of day seven of this trip. Uh, I felt compelled to have a shower tonight because I am staying here uh, at a provincial park, and that's one of the amenities that they offer, uh, which they don't necessarily offer at uh, log stations along the way. So that was actually the first time that I've had a shower uh, in an entire week since when I started the trip. Uh, now there were a couple of walk stations that I encountered that actually did have showers, uh, so I could have taken showers those nights, uh, but for a variety of reasons I didn't end up using them, and the closest that I came to have a sh having a shower earlier in the trip uh, was when I went for my swim at uh, Colonel By Island. Um, but yeah, another good day of paddling, I enjoyed it, uh, 28.5 kilometers today, and um, I'm just really happy with how all the little bits and pieces of this uh, day sort of came together. Um, including the early check-in. I wasn't really sure whether that was going to be possible. Uh, if it wasn't, I was thinking that, okay, well, I guess I'll just sort of not come here first and I'll just take all my stuff with me as I paddled uh, up the Kempville Creek. But I, you know, that may have not worked out the best because, you know, when I had to go for that walk to go shopping, uh, that would have been, you know, kind of, uh, you know, a lot of stuff to leave there. Uh, it probably would have been fine. I mean, the place that I ended up stashing the canoe, uh, you know, seemed just fine. Uh, you know, really a place that no one's really going to see it. And, you know, no one's really going to take your stuff anyways. But, you know, you just, you're never really sure. Um, and, uh, you know, I felt that, you know, coming here first and, and setting it up and just taking a lighter load there uh, just was the best way to go. And it really worked out well. Um, I'm really happy with the fact that this provincial park is here. Uh, it really, you know, made this trip work out really well because it was really nice getting to go and visit Kempville. It was nice getting to see the Kempville Creek. Uh, when I do these trips, I like to, I always like to say, I like to try and uh, leave no stone unturned. If there's something that I can go and do that's sort of nearby, I want to go and do it and sort of cross off as many things, you know, check as many things off the list as possible because it's like, well, you know, when am I ever going to get the opportunity again to come and paddle the Kempville Creek? It's, you know, kind of unlikely that I'll find myself, you know, here in this part of the province with some kind of paddle craft where I can actually go and do that sort of thing. So, yeah, I'm really, um, really happy uh, that I was able to do that. 
Uh, I mentioned my shower earlier and it was sort of something that I could do when I'm at a provincial park. Um, I felt, as I said, I felt compelled to do it because when you stay at a provincial park, it is actually significantly more expensive than camping at a log station. Uh, I'm paying about $55 uh, tonight to camp here. And at a log station, it's only $5 a night. So it's 11 times more expensive. Um, but I'm not complaining about that. That's just fine. Uh, I am occupying a campsite that you know is able to, to accommodate way more than just one person. Where at a log station, you're paying you know a single person uh, camping fee. If you had two people, you would pay $10. Um, so yeah, it's fair, and uh, it's just great to have a provincial park that's here that allowed that trip to go up to Kempville and back uh, worked out for me. Um, but yeah, really successful day number seven, and looking forward to day number eight where I'm going to continue my way further down the river that way and get to another log station. Uh, today I didn't see any log stations. Tomorrow I will only be seeing one log station and I plan on getting there uh, you know, before they close at five so that I'll be able to uh, you know, actually go through the log. Actually, they'll close at six tomorrow because uh, it's a weekend tomorrow and they have longer hours. But definitely gonna make sure I'm there by six and probably planning on leaving just as early this morning as I did, uh, just as early tomorrow as I did this morning. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed joining me for day number seven. If you watched all the way to the end of this video, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. And thanks for watching.